Welcome to our first Tulsa Youth Rowing Association parent video cast. Uh, my name is Neil Bergenroth and I'm the head coach of Tulsa Youth Rowing Association. I just wanted to spend a few minutes uh, explaining uh, how head races work so you understand how um, you know your athletes are going to be racing this, this season and a very a quick guide to all the different boat types that you're likely to see on the river. So a head race is really a race against the clock. It's um, all the crews line up one by one and they're sent off one by one with a 10 to 15 second interval. And the idea is to travel from the start line to the finish line, usually around corners, through bridges and other, other things like that. Um, and record the fastest time or the fastest time possible between point A and point B. If you've ever seen the time trials done at the, um, uh, the um, Tour de France, you're going to see a very similar thing happen at a head race. So we want to go for as fast as we can from point A to point B. We have various different head style races this fall. The first one is this weekend, uh, and it's the head of the Verdigris. Uh, there are no other teams other than our own competing. Uh, so we, we're using it as an intra-squad scrimmage to kind of get used to what a head race is. Um, for the varsity guys, it's very much a training day. Uh, for the novice guys, it's the first time they're going to have uh, the, the experience of what a head race is going to feel like. So it's really uh, it's an important day, but it's also kind of a dress rehearsal for our first regatta, which is the head of the Oklahoma, uh, two weeks after the head of Verdigree. So looking at the schedule here, our first real event is the head of the Oklahoma, and that's in OKC, and that's October 3rd and 4th. That's a 4,000 meter course. Uh, very similar to what we'll be rowing in the head of the Verdigree. The next uh, race is just for the varsity, and we have select varsity kids going this year. Uh, the girls will be going up there with a team of 10, uh, and that's a 5,000 meter race course. The head of the Charles is the largest uh, head race, featuring over 1,200 crews, 500,000 people spectating. Uh, so it's a really big deal uh, and, and, and a real privilege that we get the invite to go to that. Uh, the next race, the Wichita Frostbite, all the athletes will go to that, and that's in Wichita, Kansas. It's a good three-hour drive, uh, so it's an excellent uh, opportunity for you to go and watch uh, your athletes race. It's very parent-friendly, very spectator-friendly. There's races that go by every 10 minutes, so you're sure to be entertained, and we'd love your support. And that's a 3,000-meter race. And finally, the head of the Hooch, which is after the head of the Charles, the second largest head style race in the US uh, fall calendar, and that's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And that's a 5,000 meter race. And again, it's a really good example of us being able to take these novices and these varsity kids, those that wouldn't get the opportunity to go to the head of the Charles to go race in a, in a big deal race. So it's a very exciting fall lineup. And um, we're gonna start uh, by looking at the various different boat types. Here's an eight right here. So we've got eight guys rowing. Uh, this is an example of what we call sweep rowing. Sweep rowing is when each athlete has one more, uh, and so rows either side of the boat. Uh, it is coxed typically uh, by a coxswain, and the coxswain has an amplifier so that the uh, rowers can hear them because there's often a fair distance between the coxswain seat and the end of the, the bow seat right here. And so this is an example of an eight. Actually, there's nine people in it. Uh, but uh, it's called an eight, and the symbol for an eight is eight plus. So if you see that on a program, you're gonna know what, type, what kind of boat type they're rowing. The next type is a Cox four. Again, this is a Cox boat. So right here, uh, we've got this Cox in right here. He's got a microphone on. He's sitting in the bow of the boat, near the front of the boat, and uh, he's rowing uh, along with these four guys right here, uh, two, rowers on each side, so two on the port side, two on the starboard side. So that's another example of a sweep boat, uh, sweep rowing that we might row at a, at a race. Another type of rowing is sculling, and sculling is a little bit more symmetrical. So each rower here has a quite a shorter oar, but each rower has an oar in each hand. This is called sculling. This type of boat is a coxless quad. Um, typically, there's no um, coxswains, in these boats, although it is possible to have a cox quad, but we typically only race cox as quads. So you might be wondering how we steer these boats. Sometimes it's done on pressures, um, depending on the experience of the crew. Uh, but this rower right here will have a rudder, uh, tow rudder attached to them, and they'll be able to move their foot left or right, and that will be able to help them steer their boat 
uh, through bridges, around the race course and so forth. So that's an example of four rowers in a sculling boat. Um, another type of boat that is sculling is a double, so two rowers, two oars each, one in each hand, and uh, example of a small boat. And then finally we've got the single, uh, which obviously is one person. Uh, it, you, can, you can't row a boat with sweep, but with one person, so it has to be sculling. And um, you know, we try and get our athletes into the, the sculling boats um, because it's a good lifelong skill. You know, when, when they're done rowing on teams, if you've learned how to row the single, um, you know, you, you've got a lifelong sport ahead of you. So those are the various different types of um, the boats. There are a few more, but those are the more common ones that we race. So you get a sense of what you know your, your athletes are racing in. Um, the head of the Verdigree is our first event, uh, and this is a this is a race map right here. We've set the distance for this to be about 4,000 meters, so it's very, very similar to the head of the Oklahoma, which is our first race of the season, two weeks after the head of the Verdigree, typically. Uh, it's a time trial, so crews will take off from the dock and go up to the race start, where they'll be marshaled right here, and we'll go off one at a time and try and record the fastest uh, time between uh, the start line and the finish line. Again, it'll be one at a time. Um, in terms of spectating, there is excellent viewing of the last 1K of the race course. So if you go to the TU Boathouse and walk straight towards the river, and you're just a bit downstream of the uh, Route 66 bridge, you'll be able to see your athletes rowing along uh, the last kilometer of the race. And what we'll try and do is we'll try and get the results out uh, on our Facebook page as quickly as possible so you'll have a sense of you know, where your athlete did and how they did. As I said, there's no other competition from other crews for this, but it really just gives the kids a good example of what you know a head race is before we go to the big show in Oklahoma City a couple of weeks uh, from this weekend. So hopefully this has helped and given you a sense of you know what your athletes are going to be up to this fall. And obviously if you have any questions, you can contact me on coachb at okrowing.org. Uh, with that said, happy rowing. I really appreciate everybody's support of our team uh, moving forward this season.